Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for being here. My name is Andrew, coming to you from the beautiful Carolinas. Today's topic is going to be, as you get stronger, they get smaller. Think about that for a minute. Everyone, if you like the content, please like, subscribe, and share. So I'm referring to the narcissist. They do get smaller the further you get away from them. Picture, if you will, you are in a car, you're driving, and you're going straight ahead, which is the healing path and you look in the rear view mirror and you see a dot and that little dot is getting smaller and smaller and smaller, that's the narcissist. You're leaving them in the past and you are moving forward. Quick little analogy for you. But as you get stronger and you begin to heal and you understand that that relationship almost took you down for the count, but it didn't because you're here in the community and you're getting your cup full and you're becoming awakened and aware, educated and empowered, that relationship was the challenging relationship to say the least. It was the most challenging relationship you had ever been a part of. And at one point, the narcissist had the loudest voice in your life. That's why they would be abusing you by using techniques such as gaslighting, stonewalling, the smear campaign, the silent treatment, triangulation, my least favorite that these people do, and so many other things. Back then when you were in that relationship, you did not know that you were with a narcissistic person. Maybe this is the first video you're consuming on narcissism and you're really understanding that you're getting light bulb moments left, right, and center. Maybe you realize that it's your mom. Maybe it's your dad. Maybe it's both. Maybe it's your brother, sister, aunt, uncle, mom, um, neighbor, coworker, colleague. Maybe it's your romantic interest. The point I'm sharing here is the narcissist eventually will be left in the past. And to do this, you're gonna have to heal. You're gonna have to go through the tunnel. You're gonna have to see the light at the end of the tunnel and continue to move forward leaving the narcissist in the past. Now that is why on the channel I suggest frequently to go no contact and block these people. This video will be no different. That is when the healing will accelerate. Now again, the, the healing path is not linear. It will take time, a lot of time. But in your time you will heal. And blocking isn't the only answer. Time isn't the only answer. The answers are to really slow your life down. Take stock of who you are and what happened to you when you were in that relationship. And that Yes, the narcissist did have the loudest voice when you were in the relationship with them, but they no longer have a voice. Maybe you're still ruminating a little bit. Maybe you're still thinking about them. I get, I understand all these things, but the further you get away from the narcissist and that relationship in time, you will understand that they become itsy bitsy teeny weeny. They become microscopic. They are a tiny little molecule on this huge planet. And you are the beautiful, bright, shining light that I speak about on the channel and in the community because you're the energy source that the narcissist wanted to extract from. Keep in mind, the narcissist, they are shallow, they're hollow, they're cowards, they're bullies. There's nothing to them. There's nothing in their core. They are an energy vampire trying to zap other people's energy and steal their uh, growth and steal their progress and steal their fortune, um, their commitment and their resilience. The narcissist is a very, very tiny, microscopic person. As you get stronger, this happens more and more. Now, what I'm sharing here is that when you were in that relationship, you were doing everything you possibly could do to keep the relationship afloat. You were the band-aid that was keeping the relationship together. You were the glue that was keeping the relationship together. The whole time the narcissist was trying to dismantle or break the relationship. But back then you didn't know it. You weren't taught this in school. So you did not know what you were up against. But imagine, if you will, for anybody who was not in a narcissistic relationship and you're consuming this video, imagine being in a relationship with somebody and thinking it is one way when in fact it is the exact opposite. Example, let's say it's a romantic setting. You fell in love with somebody who could not fall in love with you. You fell in love with somebody and you professed your hopes, dreams, aspirations, and goals and you told them all these things and that they used everything that you shared with them to weaponize it against you at a later date. But the whole time they were giving you the googly eyes or batting their eyelashes and telling you that they loved you, but they didn't. They actually had disdain for you. They did not want you to make it. They did not want you to love. They did not want you to use your empathy. They did not want you to succeed in life. They were trying to take you down for the count. So that's an illustration or an example for people who haven't been in the relationship to wrap your head around that, yeah, when you fall in love with someone who can't fall in love with you, that is challenging to say the least. But as you get further and further away from the narcissist, let's say you were discarded or you ended it yourself. Either way, my heart goes out to you, but what did you have to do? You had to really process things. You had to really slow your life down. You had to understand the blocking was the path, that many people don't have your best interest at heart. 
that narcissism is prevalent on the planet, that perhaps you were in the narcissistic relationship and maybe even fell in love with them, and that that relationship wasn't what you thought it was, it was what it was. So when you reach that point, that's when you have to practice radical acceptance and you understand that you can't change the past. What the narcissist did, they did. You can't allow them to gaslight you and tell you that it didn't happen that way because it did. Because many of us took notes when we were in the relationship on our smartphones or journaled or talked to people that we were close with like that you weren't being treated properly. And this is all documentation of an unstable and unhealthy relationship, i.e. a narcissistic relationship. But when you did those things back then and you didn't have the wisdom and you didn't know what narcissism was, you couldn't put two and two together so you were stuck. You were trapped, you kept on working for the narcissist. You kept on doing what they wanted you to do, when they wanted you to do it, and how they wanted you to do it. And again, as I mentioned so often on the channel, your resources were being decimated. Your health, finances, social circle, status, love, empathy, your time, your hobbies, everything about you was being decimated left, right, and center because the narcissist was pressing on the gas pedal of abuse. They were manipulating those around you they were driving wedges between you and anything that mattered, which included your immediate family members, your kids, your hobbies, your work, your anything that you, you your sports, your activities, your friendships. This is what they were trying to do. They're trying to dismantle your life right before before your very eyes. But you couldn't wrap your head around it. You didn't know that it was the one person that you were telling all the information to, that you were giving all these uh, keys for them to unlock and to destroy your life even more. That is why in the beginning of these relationships, oversharing is something that I'm certain you did. You probably told the, the narcissist so many things about you, your hopes, dreams, aspirations, etc., and they used that as the playbook as to how to get close to you, how to get you to fall in love with them maybe, or how to get you to relocate with them or go into business or have kids or get married, etc. And once they knew they had you, that's when they began to pull back. That's when they began to devalue you more and more and more because you were already in it. They knew that they placed you in the trauma bond. They knew that you were in the devaluation stage and they knew that you would be working to maintain that relationship to the best of your ability until something broke, which means either the narcissist discarded you or you ended it yourself. The third outcome is you stay in the narcissistic fog trapped there for the rest of your life. And that's where some people are, unfortunately. And that's just the way relationships go with certain people. Certain people don't believe that there's hope out there. They don't believe they're strong enough to break free from the narcissist. And they don't believe that there are so many doors of abundance waiting for them. But that's not you because you're getting the wisdom, you're applying the tools and you're in the community. But as you get stronger, you will realize the narcissist, yeah, they did have a loud voice. Yes, they did manipulate you, but they no longer have a voice because you've blocked them and they can't manipulate you any longer because now you see behind the mask. You figured out who they were. You put the puzzle together, whereas most people didn't and aren't strong enough to put the puzzle together. And you now understand that it's not just the narcissistic relationship that you were part of, that there are other energy vampires that perhaps were or still are flying around you. And some of these people would include flying monkeys, and these people are the people that report back to the narcissist on your whereabouts, what you're doing, your hair color, who you're dating, etc. These are nosy people with nothing better to do with their time. But the flying monkeys, they too, could be a target of the narcissist. Maybe they're being targeted right now, who knows, but nobody is safe. And I mean, nobody is safe when you are a, in a relationship with the narcissist, whether it's a family member, romantic interest, friend, whatever, colleague, coworker, because the narcissist will go any which way the wind blows. They change their thoughts on a dime. That is why so frequently when they find the new shiny object, which at one point was you, i.e. the new supply, that's what usually when they discard the old source of supply and they keep the old source of supply stuck pining for them, living rent-free in their head, etc. The narcissist, is they want to live in the old supplies uh, head rent-free. And that's when they just go on to the new supply. And that's how the cycle goes around and around and around. But that's not you. You're not in the loop. You're not in the cycle of devastation and misery. You're now paying it forward, getting your cup full. You are now becoming the educated empath. You're becoming stronger every day. And you're leaving the narcissist in the past. And you are accepting and understanding what they did to you and that there was no other way you had to go through that relationship and you learned from it. You're taking the lifelong learning lessons from the past, from the narcissistic relationship, and you're growing and you're healing and you're headed towards the pinnacle of indifference and you're not predicting the future. You're not saying, well, what if? What happens if this happens? What, what about this? Should I do that? No, you don't do that because when you do that, you get stuck, you stay frozen. You live in the present moment, the here and the now. Whatever the date and hour is, that's where you need to be living, focusing on yourself 
but back then you were putting the narcissist way high on the pedestal. You were giving to a fault. You were pumping them up. You were pumping up their fragile ego to the detriment of yourself. And you didn't know what you were doing because you were working for the narcissist. That's why I mentioned so frequently on the channel, you were the unpaid helper. You were the walking apology. You were the sounding board. You were the chauffeur. You were the errand person. You were the person who would pay the bills and buy the groceries and raise the kids and pay tuition and all the vacations and all these things. But all those things go away when the relationship ends and there's a huge void that needs to be filled. And that void needs to be filled by you, for you, and about you. And that is part of the healing path. That void, it, I'll explain it this way, and I created a few videos on this in the past. The void is when you no longer have the toxicity of the narcissist in your life, and you have to unwind the relationship, and you have to learn the definitions in the glossary on the narcissistic abusive psyche, cycle, i.e. what is gaslighting, smear campaign, et cetera. Once you learn those, and you couple those definitions with your experience, that equals wisdom. That's when you apply the tools, i.e. go no contact, et cetera. But that void, is a very pivotal part of the healing path because when you are accustomed to running around 24 seven, accomplishing an endless to-do list and tomorrow getting two more endless to-do lists and then all of a sudden that goes away like that, then you have a huge void, you have time. And that's why many people experience uh, challenging times because you have to heal. Remember, this is the relationship you have to heal from. And I did it, if I did it, you can do it, but you're gonna, it's gonna take time. It's gonna take a lot of time, but in your time you will heal. Why I'm saying that is the void has to be filled the pining for the narcissist will dissipate. The realizing that the narcissist never had your best interest at heart will appear. Understanding that the narcissist is in a loop and they can't introspect. They won't give you closure. They won't be accountable. And they will blame anything they possibly can on you and virtually anybody else. But this is how the narcissist goes on through life. They get a person in their life or multiple people. They extract whatever they can from them for a period of time. And then when they get whatever they want, then they discard them, usually. Then they go on to a new source of supply. It's Picture your car that I mentioned at the beginning of this video. Your car, well, let's say it takes gasoline or electricity. Well, once the gas or electricity runs out, you have to top up. You have to plug it back in and get your Tesla charged or you have to put gasoline in your car, whatever it is. That's what the narcissist does with people. They look at people as opportunities. They look at people as supply sources. And it's I know it's a twisted and disgusting mindset, but it's real. The narcissist has no love. They have no empathy. They don't care about anybody but themselves, play that again. Now, again, before I get ready to end the video, as you become stronger, the narcissist becomes smaller. The narcissist sincerely becomes microscopic because eventually you realize that all the energy that you placed into them when you were in the relationship, it now needs to go back into you to heal. When you wrap your head around that, you practice radical acceptance, you slow your life down, you journal, you meditate, you see a therapist, you watch videos, you read, you heal childhood wounds, etc. And you do all these things in your time, but you insulate yourself because you're in a cocoon of boundaries. And you're not really going out because you don't wanna go out. And you're not really communicating with many people because you don't really wanna communicate with many people. This is the healing path. This is when you get stronger. And that's where that void needs to be filled. And remember, the void, it's not, it may sound like a negative thing. It's just part of the healing path, but it's a very, very instrumental and important and pivotal part of the healing path. Because if you were stuck pining for the narcissist when the relationship ended, that's where they wanted you. Where we want you, where I want you, where the community wants you, where the people at the pinnacle of indifference want you, it's to understand the narcissist is who they are. They're a toxic energy vampire. They're a dark energy force, a dark energy source, and they want to keep you stuck. They wanted to keep you stuck. But what I want is you, for you to understand that you need to break free and you need to really heal and slow your life down and process things and let your beautiful, bright, shining light elevate you because that's what will happen. Eventually, the narcissist will stay down in the low vibrational quagmire state where they exist, a place where you are existing when you're in the relationship with them, but they can't elevate. It's impossible. That's why they need a fuel source. That's why they need supply. That's why they need an energy source. That's why they needed you, but you thought you needed them. You don't need anybody but yourself. This is a fact, but when you were manipulated and you were being devalued and placed in the trauma bond and you believed that you couldn't live without the narcissist, that they were the yin to your yang, that they completed you and I'll just give them one more chance, maybe they'll change, maybe they found Jesus, uh, maybe, they, maybe they do love me, etc. When you're stuck there, that's not a good place to be, but we were all stuck there at one point, but so many of us have reached the pinnacle, so many of us have healed and we're paying it forward and helping other people to get to where we are. There is more than enough room at the mountaintop for you. There is so much room for you and so many other people who are healing. Of course, 
there is no room for the narcissist or a toxic person because they have to stay down in the low vibrational energy state. But for you, the beautiful empath, the beautiful bright shining light, we're waiting for you. Maybe you just kicked the narcissist to the curb today. Maybe you finally went no contact. Maybe you blocked them today. Maybe you finally got a light bulb moment that yes, in fact, the narcissist doesn't care about you or anybody and you really need to heal and you need to slow your life down, etc. But that's what we do. We have to heal. The narcissist has nothing to heal from because there's nothing inside of them. That's why they just go on to the new supply. That's why they just break people's hearts. That's why they just discard people. That's why they don't cry at funerals. That's why they don't care about other people. What they wanna do is keep people stuck and trapped. Now again, that is not you. You're getting the wisdom or you have acquired the wisdom and you understand now that you are the priority. You come first, second, and third. And why I say that is when you were in the narcissistic relationship, you were putting them high on a pedestal to the detriment of yourself. You were doing everything for them and you were not taking care of yourself. But now the narcissist is out of your life and you're healing and you are taking care of yourself. You're rebuilding relationships. You are falling in love again. You're relocating. You're taking a class, teaching a class, reading a book, writing a book. You're doing things that you want to do in your own time. Example, if you want to sleep until 11 o'clock this morning, do it. If you want to stay up till four o'clock in the morning, do it. If you want to watch videos, do it. If you want to read, do it. If you want to write a book, do it. If you want to take a vacation, do it. If you want to go exercise, go for it. But you're doing this because it's what you want to do. It's not another person telling you, example, that uh, your favorite hobby, no one does that. Why would you do that? It's a waste of time or you're spending too much money on it, etc. See, the narcissist wanted to control you and they did control you for the length of that relationship, but nobody can control you now because now you decide who you want to communicate with, who you don't want to communicate with, what you do, what you don't do, and you understand that you are a very, very cherished and valuable person on the planet. And the narcissist tried to brainwash you and tell you that you weren't, but you are. And that's why you're here, you're paying it forward. So understand the stronger you get, the smaller the narcissist gets. This is a fact. And if this is you, if you're getting stronger or if you have uh, reached the pinnacle and you're super strong and galvanized and you're in the third version of yourself, drop comments below, pay it forward. Because at many, at a uh, period in time, you too were stuck, you were trapped just like I was and you didn't know what you didn't know because you didn't know what narcissism was. And when you're in that vulnerable place or space and you were discarded and you don't know where to turn and your whole support system is blown up and you're left for uh, not good, let's put it that way, crumbled up like a sheet of paper in the freeway, you don't know which direction to turn but the narcissist knew what they did to you. You need to remember that. They know exactly what they're doing and they knew what they did to you and they knew what they did to me but they did not think you would figure it out. So when you do put two and two together, you do get the needle in a haystack and you do realize what narcissism is and how it affected you for a period of time, you really need to insulate yourself and protect yourself. If not now, when? So everyone, that's the video. I hope you liked it. I loved doing it from the beautiful Carolinas. This is Andrew. Namaste. Have a great afternoon, evening, or morning, no matter where you are on the planet. You're not alone. Remember that. You're not alone. God bless you all. I love you. And enjoy yourselves. Be kind to yourselves. Be patient with yourselves. Realize that that relationship it was not what you thought it was because the narcissist was manipulating you and they most likely were wearing a mask when, they, when you met them. In other words, they were not being themselves. They were not being authentic or genuine because they can't be that way with you or with anybody. That's why they just slither off into the darkness onto a new supply once they get whatever they want from you or from myself. But no longer does that happen because we have boundaries. We are not people pleasers. We can now say no, the strongest word in the English language. And remember, when we say no to something or someone, we are saying yes to, our, to ourselves. So everyone, that's the video. I hope you liked it. I loved it. I loved doing it. And no, I'm not reading from script for all of you narcissists out there who continue to believe that I'm reading from script. Uh, that's not what I'm doing. I am free flowing like I've always done. I love you all. God bless you. And if you are a narcissist and you're on the channel, please remove yourself. You're not welcome. I love you all. God bless you. Bye, you guys.